It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. I am your host, Pat Brown, and boy, is it good to be back. My usual line mates, Kyle Knopp and Devin Little, are here for a little, well, as you can see, pre-draft party, along with Ebug and producer extraordinaire, Matthew Zator. Uh, let's welcome a few new faces to this very special episode before we get going. Uh, joining us on uh, the Grind Line, Red Wings contributor Delaney Reimer. Delaney, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking time out to talk a little uh, draft and prospects. And speaking of prospects, THW Prospects Editor Peter Barracchini. Thanks so much for hopping on our show today, Peter. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, Happy to take this first lap out uh, with uh, Delaney as well. So getting the the early jitters (laughs) out, but let's go on the grind line. I like it. Get that solo laugh out there. We're uh, we're right behind you. And just remember for you at home before we get started, this week's show being brought to you by Morning Skate, the hockey writer's morning newsletter that drops right into your inbox every weekday at 8 a.m. sharp. Stay in tune with the world of hockey by keeping up with the latest news, rumors, stories, funnies, and so much more all delivered conveniently right to you. Go to morningskate.io, sign up right now to see what all the fun is about. Also, before we get going, I just want to point out this show will be formatted a little bit differently than what our our viewers are used to seeing. Um, That said, because everybody's going to kind of get a turn here and there, but we are going to go ahead and start out with an oldie and an oldie but a goodie, one good one bad, but we are going to ask our esteemed prospect gurus about their perspective on the wings prospect pool. So Matthew Ebug, producer extraordinaire, we're going to start with you and I'm going to ask you, give us one good, one bad on Detroit's current pipeline. Well, I mean, there's a lot of good, but right? I'll, I'll do, I'll <laughs> give you one, um, a lot of intriguing forwards. I mean, lots of elite talent in this prospect pool and, we have already seen a couple of them, you know, debut this season. Uh, and now you got, we're going to talk about a bunch of these guys, but just Berggren, Soderblom, Niederbach, Mazur, um, just off, that's just a few of them. Um, so lots of great elite, um, potentially elite uh, forwards in that pool. Um, the bad, not much on defense beyond Edmondson. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of, I'd say Edmondson's probably your only surefire probably top pairing top four defensemen in the pool pool right now and not a lot of that uh, right handed as well i mean cider of course is in is now an nhler he's not a prospect anymore um but not beyond that and so that's that's the bad the defense just doesn't have much beyond edmondson sounds good good points peter we are going to come to you next same question what do you make of the Red Wings prospect pool? Give pool, give us one good and one bad. Yeah, I think you. I mean, you got to look at Sebastian Kosa and how he's able to, you know, get back in the form and be a factor for the Edmonton Oil Kings. Um, you know, who just recently won the Western Hockey League Championship and they're en route to the Memorial Cup. So you look to him as the goaltender of the future. Obviously, his numbers. Looked great, didn't look great, but the record showed that, you know, maybe something wasn't up. He didn't quite get the starter job for the World Juniors, but then he was able to find his footing, and we all know the rest after that. One bad, um, like Matt said, the defense is still a question mark after Edmondson. Obviously, you got a lot of great talent in Albert Johansson, Emil Vero. I'm still a little bit iffy on you know the defensive game of William Wallander but you know you have some stability in Donovan Zabrango so you have depth but not a whole lot to try and find that extra depth in like you know the you know four four to six range hopefully but um you know you want to see what they can do in North America because a lot of them are Europeans you got to bring them over and see what they can do in the AHL but I think that they got some really solid pieces it's just a matter of if they can reach their potential 
Good stuff. Um, should Costa's career go south, I'm going to blame the black cat that walked across the lane <laughs> screen <laughs> while you were talking about him. So, uh, <laughs> I'm so hard not to laugh at that, though. <laughs> it's good. It was good focus, good concentration. Uh, Delaney, we need uh, an introduction. Friday the 13th, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, I think we're seventh line mate for the day. She's just. <laughs> yeah. I, I got it. What, what's her name, Delaney? Got to um, ask. Her name's B. Hold on, she'll Aww. say. See, See that's <laughs> oh, oh, it's not a not a true black cat. See, no yeah, hex there. Was, there is no yeah. hex. Oh, sorry. Love it. Love it. Okay. Feel better. Now. Feel better. All right. Back on track here. Good stuff. Appreciate the perspective. Now we're going to jump in and talk about some of those specific players who you were just mentioning. And um, the first name that's going to come up has garnered a whole lot of attention this year. Simon Edvinson, uh, the Red Wings, 19 year old defensive prospect. He's already caught everybody's attention, especially after witnessing more Cider's fantastic rookie campaign in the NHL. So Kyle, we're going to start with you and it's a pretty easy question for you. No big deal. Will Simon Edvinson <laughs> play in the NHL next season? Short answer, yes, absolutely. He will be up there at some point. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if he will start the season there. That's really going to come down to the type of offseason he has and the type of work he puts in and then the training camp as he comes over to Detroit. But, you know, last year I was quick to say that uh, a 19-year-old was going to start the year in Grand Rapids and I was proven to be wrong right off the bat. <laughs> and so I don't want to make that mistake again this year. Uh, so I'm going to say absolutely. Simon Edmondson will be with the Red Wings at some point next year. Uh, and I would not be surprised if he were to join that team out of the gate and really, you know, kind of be that uh, left side cider uh, as we saw this season. Devin, I just heard Kyle say Edmonton was going to score 50 goals. Is, is yeah, I, that too, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, tell, but... I want 50 points. I'll, 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 I will say he'll be the next Red Wings rookie to get 50 points. But I'm not like saying 50 it. goals. I like it. <laughs> I'm not falling for that again. <laughs> A bit more realistic this time. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Peter, we're going to swing it on back to you. You have seen a lot of defensive prospects come up through the league. What do you make from Simon Edvinson and will he make the big league club next season? Yeah. Going back to the U 18s, the biggest thing for me and why I didn't have him ranked so high was basically his lateral movement. He could get beat kind of easily, but he's worked on his, you know, movements and where to turn um, and pivot in the right direction. If he's getting beat to the outside. So he has improved on that tremendously. Um, Obviously, the shot, the defensive abilities to get into the lanes and even be a factor or shorthanded and, you know, yeah. not be afraid to be aggressive and jump into the rush. Um, we see Cider do that quite a bit. Um, whether or not he makes the NHL next season, I, I the thing is, Cider had some more pro experience. So I think maybe sure. he was more willing to make the jump right away. I wouldn't be surprised if they give him the, like at least a six, seven game tryout start him off in the minors and then like Kyle said maybe halfway through the season January February if he's been consistent enough call him up if he deserves it and if, if the competition is just too easy why not just increase the workload and see what he could do at the NHL good Absolutely. stuff good stuff so all right we're gonna move on and and it's been a while so excuse me <laughs> choo, choo. my favorite prospect my first <laughs> ever hockey writers article the one the only jonathan bergren uh boy did he ever have a season to remember with the griffins uh 64 points on 21 goals and 43 assists in 70 ahl games it's a shame uh the griffins didn't make the playoffs would have been fun to see what he could have done there but um devin we've been conducting hype trains for the better part of two years now uh <laughs> so i want to start with you will bergren play with the wings next year uh your hype train will be loud and proud next year because <laughs> i think he will be with the red wings um i would not be surprised if he even starts with the red wings um it, it'd be one thing if he had kind of a so-so a year in the ahl like in you could make the argument that he still has you know some some room or something to prove basically but he set the rookie scoring record or the rookie score record for that franchise i don't think you can you know what else do you have to prove? I think he's, he's going to give, get every opportunity to play in Detroit next year. I think he will, you know, make good on that opportunity. 
Um, do I think he's going to be a top line player like Lucas Raymond was out of the gate? No, but I do think he'll be a player that makes a difference in a middle six role. And I would not be surprised if he is uh, at least in the Calder conversation, not, not maybe not, you know, at the top of the podium, but in the conversation. I like what I hear. I like what I hear there. Um, I think it's worth noting too. had the Griffins not been in a playoff race, there's a fair chance uh, yes. we may have seen Bergman at least have a cup of coffee um, this past season. So, and I say this past season, well aware that there are still two teams playing, but I refuse to acknowledge one of them. Um, that said, Matthew, we're coming to you. <laughs> Same question. Do you think we can expect to see Bergman in the NHL next season? Well, I, I agree with Devin. He definitely will be in the NHL next season. I, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in um, the lineup too uh, on opening night. So the one thing about him, like he's probably the most, like he has most anticipated prospect. Um, now, be, you know, Lucas Raymond is in the NHL now. So he's the next one up. Um, he, he's such an exciting player from what he did in, in Grand Rapids. And um, one of those guys that can get on the highlight reel, score some goals, um, and probably be a top line player eventually, not yet. Um, but he, he will, I think he will make a difference next season. And one thing about him, he's not, everyone does this. And like I said, breaking that rookie record. I mean, it's, it's, you know, when you break a record, it's been held for a while. So it's not like it's, that's a small feat. So, um, like Devin said, I don't think he has anything else to prove in the AHL. I think he has to now see if he can do it in the NHL against uh, tougher competition, bigger defensemen, better goaltenders. Um, but I think Berger definitely has all the talent, all the tools to be that type of player. And I still go back to last year when I didn't put him on the prospect top 100 prospects and uh, everyone kind of got on me for doing that, which um, <laughs> now that I know <laughs> looking at him now, I don't even know why I did that. So um, he's going to be a heck of a player. You know, I'm honestly surprised Pat keeps inviting you back because of that. <laughs> well, <laughs> quickly, I can say, I, I think I know why he flew under the radar because he had trouble staying healthy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, he got off to a pretty darn rough start in terms of his health. And yeah. because of that, um, things were slow to roll out and it just happened to coincide. It hard to believe I've been at the hockey writers almost two years and, um, he started off crazy hot in the SHL a couple seasons ago and um, hasn't looked back. So mm -hmm. really, really good perspective. Um, we got to move on. So let's go between the pipes. Let's talk about Sebastian Cosa. We've already brought up his name a couple times today. Um, and he and a stacked Edmonton Oil Kings team just capped a really impressive WHL title run. He was named the first all-star team, and that's just one season removed after posting the league's best GAA and safe percentage. Delaney, can't believe we haven't heard from you yet, so we're going to come to you first on this one. What are your observations on Sebastian Costa, and what do you think in terms of an ETA at the NHL level? Well, um, as you just said, he's had an absolutely remarkable season in the WHL with the Oil Kings, but I just, in my opinion, I feel like it's at a lower level and he just needs more time. He's doing really great and the pace that he's on is really great, but he needs to make a couple more stops along the way. It's not a direct flight. He needs a couple of layovers in there, whether it be ECHL, AHL etc. He just needs to keep gradually getting up to high, higher levels of performance. Oh, boy, sorry. But um, you could tell that he has it down where he's at. He has it down in the WHL. He's doing great. And he's ready for the next step. But that next step is not the NHL. Definitely not. But he has really good looks for the future. So sure. I, I think that's a really good point, too. And and again, and I mentioned it kind of in the lead in he there's a stacked team in front of him. Uh, yes. The argument, you know, obviously one of my all time favorite players, Chris Osgood, that's what kind of keeps him out of the hall is what people say is the team that he had in front of him. Uh, and you're seeing that with Kosa right now. So completely agree. Although I think maybe a Kosa fan out there had a voodoo doll to your throat there while uh, you're talking. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> I don't want to say it. I know I don't want to say it. I want to see him up in Detroit. Up in oh, Michigan. yeah. <laughs> but things take time, especially with goaltender development. It takes oh, absolutely. And to, to go, 
to go along with your point, sorry, Delaney, uh, he no, got no, a no. lot of that flack last year too. Um, yeah. on that, during that shortened season when I think he only had like one or two losses, but everyone kept saying, Oh, it's the team in front of him. Oh, it's the team in front of him. Um, and then you kind of saw, you know, him come down to earth at the world juniors a bit. Um, so I think you, you know, you're right. He, he does need a little more time to develop. So great. Yeah. Great point. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, we're going to move on Peter, same question to you, your thoughts on the 19 year old netminder season. And when can we expect to see him in a wing wheel? Yeah, I agree with Delaney that, you know, time is the of the essence with him. Like, give him all the time that he needs to develop. I mean, he's already shown the composure, you know, the rebound control, the lateral movements of what makes a great goaltender in the NHL. And he, ha- he already has a size down pad. I mean, let's face it, got to be big in front of the nets to block the pucks. But at the same time, you know, we've seen smaller goaltenders do the same thing. Um, I think realistically, um, yeah, he, 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 he did come down to earth. I also agree with Kyle on that, that where, you know, the numbers didn't quite match up with what the record was showing, where obviously his, his record for the season was 33, nine and three, but nine, 13 save percentage two twenty eight goals against average. It's not bad. I mean, it's still really good, but at the same time, you know, if he was really that great, you expected to maybe be just a bit higher at nine twenty get that down to maybe just under 190 for goals against. But then again, you know, young goaltender has a lot of potential. He still got, he so he still has a lot of room to grow and, you know, find that consistency. And the big thing Mm -hmm. for me is in terms of timeline with goalies, you're looking at usually four to five years. Um, I think that's more realistic. I already even six. I think that's a safe bet for any goaltender, even as someone as good as Koza with the potentials that he has to be a starter for this franchise. Um, that, that that's where I think if he's able to get there quicker, so be it. Um, he, he, has, he deserves it, especially if he, if he puts his mind to it and he, and he develops the way, you know, the red rings hope that he could. Yeah, sure. Just, just real quick, uh, to, to Peter's point about goalies taking about five years, Andre Vasilevsky, best goalie in the world, right? Four, four or five years after he was drafted, he finally became the lightning's uh, mm-hmm. go-to goalie. So it takes time even for the best goalies in the world. Yeah. Absolutely. Even the not so best goalies in the world. Look, yeah. at, Jimmy, yeah. look at Jimmy Howard. for crying yeah. out. <laughs> So he, he sure paid his dues as well. It's just it's a longer road to the NHL if you're a goalie. No doubt about it. So really, really good points, Delaney and Peter. Good points. So we've talked Edvinson. We've talked Bergen. We've talked Kosa. Crossed off some of the biggest names in the Wings pipeline. What about the best of the rest? Delaney, I want to start with you. What Red Wings prospect would you like to highlight? Um, I'm actually going to pull one kind of out of the middle of the stack here and go with Liam Dower Nielsen. Um, he's not talked about all too much, but then again, you look at everyone else who he's in cahoots with and you see why he's not talked about too much. He's just not standing <laughs> out quite as much. But um, he had 50 points through 34 games with uh, Frolanda, the J20 team, U20 team. And he had 19 goals, 31 assists. And that's something that's getting overlooked for the most part. I think that's pretty, pretty impressive. And he's another one of those guys, a Swedish playmaker with a great hockey sense Mm -hmm. that's he's another one of those we have tons of them and he's another one you can tell (laughs) the swedes the swedes you just gotta love them gotta love them playmakers they're smart (laughs) over there and then the 31 assists that's a that's a testimonial for that all in itself because not only can he score 19 goals that's nothing to turn your nose up at absolutely all right um, we're going to move on here. Devin coming over to you. Best of the rest. Which Red Wings prospect would you highlight? Well, he, he was mentioned, um, towards the beginning of the show for a split second. Um, we talk about Edvinson and Berger and maybe having a chance to, uh, or at least being somewhat likely to crack the Red Wings roster next year. I think a player that, uh, not enough people are talking about potentially making the roster next year is defenseman Albert Johansson. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is poised to come over to North America for his first season, you know, on the continent, uh, next year. Um, and he's coming off of a season where he was, uh, quite prolific in the SHL. 
Uh, he led all U22 defensemen in the SHL last year in scoring with 25 points in 52 games. Uh, and that's six points ahead of uh, second place. And by the way, real quick, uh, guess who was uh, tied for second place? That would be Simon Edmondson and William Wallander. Get excited, Hockey Town. Um, <laughs> but uh, Albert Johansson, uh, he is not. He does not have the ceiling of a Simon Edmondson. He doesn't have the ceiling of a, of a Moritz Sider. But what he does have the ceiling of is a nice, solid middle pairing defenseman that has a, that can make an impact on both ends of the ice. Can complement a uh, you know a offense first defenseman like a Philip Peronik, and can mm-hmm. also have and he also has the offense to complement a defense first partner like Gustav Lindstrom. So I could see him pushing hard for a uh, a roster spot next year. I don't know that he gets it, but he might be one of the very first people they call up in the event of injuries and you know everything else. Sure. Um, so yeah, I. Albert Johansson is a uh, big time underrated uh, prospect in my mind. And like I said, I would not be surprised if he pushes, pushes hard for a roster spot. I am a Johansson fan as well. That's a really, really good call out. Kyle, you're going to bring us home on this topic. Same question. What other Red Wings prospect are you most excited about? So I guess not so much a prospect because he you know, signed the entry level contract and we're expecting him to be in Detroit next year, but Elder Elmer Soderblom, you know, the uh, six foot seven, 216 pound left winger. Uh, I'm very excited about him and having him up um, with a chance to crack that lineup. I mean, he's a big body uh, forward. He's going to play a lot of minutes. He can play plug and play at different uh, parts of the game, you know, um, special teams, power plays, penalty kill, all that. But I'm just very excited about him and and to see a a giant up front. uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. He's a big boy. No doubt about it. All right. Let's wrap up the first half of this show. We're going to go round robin super quick, and we're just going to go from from what I see left to right. So be ready. Um, if Edvinson and Bergeron are the wing's top two prospects, who do you rank at three? Matthew, we're going to start with you. Sebastian Costa is uh, three on for me. Matthew says Costa. Peter. Kosa, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that much of a competition. I mean, f- after that, it's going to be wide open with uh, Johansson, uh, Soderblom, uh, Theodore Niederbach is also another one, Donovan Sobrango. So it's very close for that f- four to six range after that, but definitely Kosa's number three right then and there. Somewhere our old friend, our old friend also named Peter, formerly on the grind line, was very happy with that Niederbach reference. Yes. Delaney, who's prospect number three? The, if you know me, you can guess it. I'm going with Big Elmer once again. Post is a close second call for me there, but I he stands out to me a little bit more. And sure. shameless self-plug to the piece I just wrote talking about his <laughs> freshly signed contract with the Wings. There you go. So Soderblom, <laughs> one vote for him, too, for Kosa. Kyle, who you got? I'm going to go Soderblom as well. Um, I think Kosa's, yeah. Kosa's up there, but like we just talked about, he's still you know three, four, five years away. So why not get hyped about someone that's going to come up and make an immediate impact? So that's why he's my number three right now. Does Devin break the tie or toss in a <laughs> wild card? Devin, it's on you. <laughs> We're, we're going to finish with a tie. Albert Johansson's my third ring prospect. <laughs> I love if it. You want, That's if you want to hear the best part, I Wait, will what? muddy it even more. I will make it a three way tie because I also <laughs> would say Johansson, I ladies and it. gentlemen. So, <laughs> us in the comments. Help us break that tie. Yeah. Please sound <laughs> off down below. Let us hear it. And while you're doing that, just a reminder today's show is brought to you by Morning Skate, the hockey writer's morning newsletter. That's right. Enjoy waking up with some of the wittiest headlines around (laughs) finish strong and Swiss bliss. Anyone? I mean, it doesn't get much better than that (laughs) all while impressing your friends with your in-depth knowledge of the hockey world. So wake up with us, head on over to morningskate.io, check out the latest editions and sign up for the fun. So bills are paid. We live to see another week. Gotta love it. (laughs) Now we just talked about the prospects that are there. Let's talk about the ones that are going to be there, a.k.a. the upcoming draft. Keep in mind, the Red Wings are picking eighth overall in the first round, uh, and then they've got two picks in the second. So, Peter, I'm going to come back to you to kick off the second half, the back nine, if you will. Um, should the Red Wings in this year's draft, especially at eight overall, should they focus on the best player available, or do you see specific needs for them to target? 
I mean, you always want to try and go best player available. Um, but in the in this case of the Red Wings, you have a lot of the positional needs. Um, I would say you could try and go for a defenseman, but a lot of them are out of reach outside of uh, Sam and Nemec and David Yerichek. But they do need some help up the middle. Um, they do need some centermen. Depth is quite thin. But why not address the center position while also taking on possibly the best player available? Um, you know, there's the possibility that they could try and take Frank Nazar, who plays both center and mm-hmm. wing. There's Matthew Savoy. I know Devin is a really big fan of his. There's a potential of two other names that can shoot up and catch the radar. Cutter Gauthier was playing on the wing, but teams were inquiring if he could play center and he can. Um, there's also Marco Casper. I know uh, going back to Devin, he surprised them with, uh, with the pick in the THW mock draft. So based on Detroit's history, they can go with the safe bet and pick a top name, or they can jump off the board and take someone like Casper. We all know how well sure. the board setter pick went. Can the same thing happen with uh, Marco Casper? And I think based on his performance at the combine, his uh, his um, testing, I, it, it was off the charts. And I think teams will look at that. The production wasn't there. Still young player in the SHL. He could blossom into something. And the fact that he has the sure. strength and the skill set and the mindset, why not take him in the top 10? So, Peter, we're going to keep it with you for one second because I do have a follow-up. You mentioned a name and you said Devin's high on him too, Matthew Savoy. Um, would it be a surprise? Surprised to see him at eighth because if I recall, and you can call me out on this, but um, I thought for much of the year we were seeing him top three, top four. I know he's fallen a little bit, but Mm -hmm. would it be a surprise to see him all the way down at eighth? Personally, for me, not so much. I always thought of him in that five or like in that five range going down to 10. Uh, So if he was there at eighth overall, I I don't think it would be a surprise. If he was to fall further than that, um, I mean, Nine, maybe not so much, but if he was there at 10, 11, 12, yeah, I'd be really, really surprised at that because he does have the skill set. He has the creativity, the best hands, um, great playmaking abilities, um, also plays with a bit of an edge too. Uh, despite the mm-hmm. size, he can play with that. He may, he can make some big hit time hits, but it's his offensive awareness and drive that, you know, screams Detroit Red Wings-esque with the type of direction that they're going in right now. So to see him there at eighth, it wouldn't be a big surprise considering how he's been fluctuating in that top five to just outside sure. of it. Look at that. Throwing you the curveball and you hit a home run. Love it. <laughs> also got, got to love a baseball reference in a hockey show, right? <laughs> um, Kyle, same question to you, or at least the earlier question. Do you think the wings should focus on the best player available or is there a certain positional aspect you'd like to see them kind of complete? The lucky thing for the wings in this year's draft is that the position that they need the most right now is center. And there's a ton of good prospects in that top 10 range that can fall at center. Uh, You know, Peter just mentioned a bunch, but like you said, Matthew Savoy was a top three, almost a lock for a top three for most of the year. And now we're looking at him probably being around the six, seven area. And if enough teams have other needs at non-center position, he easily could fall to that number eight. So um, I think that the wings really need to focus on that center position. However, with the depth of the draft at center this year, they can still get that best player available. And there are going to be tons of them. Um, But Another point I want to bring up is I think the wings really need to focus on a player that is NHL ready or going to be NHL ready within the Mm. next year or two. Um, I think that's the biggest thing you see a lot of teams that go through the draft uh, after the wings in the past couple of years, and they have players playing right away for them in that first year. Whereas the wings usually uh, leave their players a year or two uh, to develop, which is fine. But I think having a player that could really come out and make an um, impact as an 18 year old could be uh, beneficial for the wings down the road. I love that call out about having an NHL ready player. Good stuff. Uh, Man, this episode is just jam packed with good stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I even forgot to mention Jonathan McCaramacki as another center wing option. So there we go. Love it. Even more. I don't know how much more we can cram in. My goodness. (laughs) Um, Let's switch gears and we're going to go to one of my favorite mock trade people on the planet. Devin. Devin, I got to know your thoughts on this. Is there a world where you envision Steve Eiserman trading that pick up or back? 
Well, uh, to kind of piggyback off of Kyle's point real quick here, uh, the Red Wings do need um, an NHL-ready prospect or one that is like really close to being NHL-ready. Mm-hmm. And the further back you pick, the less likely you are to get a player who fits that, uh, that description. So if the Red Wings were in a more uh, were in a better spot in the rebuild, I could see them trading back just to add that extra asset or two. But as they are right now, they need an impact prospect. They need to pick in the top 10. I was talking, you know, weeks ago, months ago about how, you know, my, my wish list thing for them was to get a top 10 pick. They got it. They need to keep it. Um, <laughs> trading up, uh, the two picks that seem to be like most commonly talked about being available are pick two and pick seven. Pick two, I think, is going to be just a little bit out of reach for the Red Wings, considering what all is out there for the Devils sure. to potentially get. Yeah. Seven, maybe. I think that's doable. Um, and having seven and eight back to back, if they aren't trading eight with it could be interesting and you could definitely get some good pieces, uh, there. Um, but long story short, uh, I I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be too much. There's going to be offers coming from a bunch of different teams. Everybody wants these picks. So it's not like, you know, the Revenues get to just lowball it and then get the pick. So, um, at the end of the day, I think they'll stay at eight. I think it makes sense for them to stay at eight. And at the end of the day, you take what player you want and you, uh, move on to the next, uh, move on to the next round. Yeah, it's Good. not like last year's draft where there's a lot more um, openness between after yeah. pick number one and two, where sure. you know you could get a seven and an eight. Yep, yeah, makes yeah. sense. You know, it's funny for earlier in the year, this draft being talked about is not one of the deepest drafts that we've seen. Um, there sure is a lot of top ten talk taking place, and it's yeah. really exciting to see this time of year, just a few weeks out actually from that draft in yeah. Montreal. So. And it- Sorry, I know we got to move quick, but I just want to say I think the reason it was getting, uh, you know, lowballed, so to speak, was because of the COVID shortened seasons. And, you know, the OHL missed a whole season uh, two yep. years ago. So a lot of these kids didn't really get the looks at the 16 and 17 years uh, where they should have. So I think you yeah, know right. now that we've seen them and they're back, uh, you, there's a lot of talent in this draft. Absolutely. Look at Kyle and his logic. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm the diplomat of the show. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about that eighth overall pick. And who do you see them targeting with number eight? Delaney, we're going to start with you. Who are the Red Wings going to take at eighth overall? I'm going with the guy that Peter forgot about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan. Oh, boy. Look here, Mom. <laughs> You got uh, it. Nailed you got it. it. You, yep. got it. you got it. <laughs> helps. Works wonders. But um, he just had, he's such a good goal scorer. And we need that. We need goals. We need pucks and net. And having sure. someone who can do that, wonderful, brilliant. And he's only 17. So he's still got a lot of room for growth. So maybe that doesn't quite hit the NHL ready mark that we're looking at. But it's not like he's far away in my opinion, at least sure. yep. he's got a great hockey sense and he's so young and he's so skilled yep. and it's a consistent level of skill that he's showing because sure. when he jumped up to the SHL, that's a huge gap from where he was to where he is now. And he was still performing mm-hmm. and he was still showing up on stats sheets and whatnot. So that's promising to me. Yeah. So Absolutely. Give him a whole season there, see how he looks maybe it'd get, be a good fit for Detroit. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Kyle, we're going to come back to you here. Is there a particular player you have in mind for eighth overall for the Red Wings? I'm, I'm keeping with my original pick from when we did the grind line uh, article. And I, I thought I was going off the board and thinking like Steve Eiserman, and now it seems to be kind of mm-hmm. the popular pick. So I'm going to take credit for that one. All right. <laughs> uh, but we're going to stay with Marco Casper. I think he's very close to being NHL ready. If he's not already, uh, like Peter said, he really impressed at the compound compound combine <laughs> and, uh, and really uh, just showed his athleticism. And, and like you said, he can be that playmaker and that goal scorer. Um, he's a center, which fits that need that the Red Wings uh, you know, need to fill right now. So I'm sticking with Marco Casper and uh, crossing my fingers that Steve Eisenman has been reading my work. Good stuff. I've, I mean, duh. It's you bring, Again, you're the diplomatic one of the group. We, he, he's got to be. He's got to be. Um, all right, go. Matthew, we are coming back to you. 
Who do you see the Red Wings taking at eighth overall in this draft? Well, uh, Peter went great scouting report on this guy right at the beginning there. Um, Matthew Savoy. I mean, I, I, I love this guy. I wrote his, I did, I did. I read his, I wrote his pro- <laughs> prospect profile and, uh, and, you know, and I always look at, uh, can the Canucks get this guy? No, he's not going to fall to 15. So, um, Detroit would definitely can use him. Like you said, center depth is something they need. Um, he's one guy that doesn't play to his size. I mean, he is a smaller undersized. I hate that word undersized forward, but um, he doesn't play like that. He, he goes to the net. He plays in the center of the ice. He doesn't, he's not a perimeter player. Um, he's got that edge. Like Peter said, he, he's got the hands. He's got the, this hockey IQ. He can score. I mean, um, what more can you want in a forward in a top line guy? top six guy. Um, Savoy's my pick uh, for any team in that range. So uh, yeah, Savoy. <laughs> his, per- his first name doesn't hurt either, does it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I love my Matthews. There you go. <laughs> um, Matthew, let's stick with you for a minute here and talk second round picks. Um, curious because I mentioned before the wings have two second round picks this draft. So um, do you see any diamonds in the rough that Eisenman may be keeping his eye on in the second round? Well, I've, I've liked this guy and Devin's mentioned him a few times on prospect corner um, for different other teams, but uh, Matias have a lead uh, defenseman um, Swedish <laughs> like, um, so I, I'm sure the Detroit Red Wings are having him on his ra- on their radar, but, um, like we said about defensemen, they need, they need some depth down there and, uh, have a lead is a guy that I've kind of gone on my radar a bit more as the time has gone on here. And, uh, he's a guy that I've really liked in that range in the second round. Um, he's probably going to go early on in the second, which is where the Red Wings have that, that second round pick or one of them. Um, so yeah, have a lead for me and just quickly, I want to throw out a late round pick, um, who just got on my radar last, what last few hours, actually, <laughs> Ooh, uh, breaking that, news, breaking yeah. news. <laughs> <laughs> he's an overager, uh, could potentially be drafted in the fifth or sixth round, uh, James Stefan, who, uh, he's cross Hannes's line mate in for okay. the Portland Winterhawks. Okay. Um, crazy chemistry with that guy. Uh, was the guy that did that Zegras in the, the Zegras pass or yeah. whacking it on the air, flip it over the oh, net. Yeah. Um, what do they call it? The reverse the Michigan mid- or something? <laughs> alley oop. So, uh, call it the alley oop. Alley oop. We're not alley oop. You of them any more credit than <laughs> Oh, that. please. I, I, I'll call that one the Zegras. Just yeah. The Zegras. <laughs> I'd, call, yeah I'd, I'd call that the Zegras. <laughs> Sounds like we could have another show just through, based on what we're calling that. <laughs> Zorro. I like that better anyway. Well, uh, Stefan broke out in the WHL this year 34 goals, 79 points, 68 games. Um, he's a son of former NHL Patrick Stefan, who was the first overall pick way back when, but, uh, <laughs> I, but yeah, he's an overager, but I think he's going to be drafted this year. He's, uh, you know, good playmaker, very cerebral player, quick mm-hmm. release. Uh, so, I mean, I, it's not the best skater, but, uh, I think he can, he'll probably be drafted this year just for what he's done. And I mean, chemistry with a prospect that's right on the Red Wings. Yep. Never know. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Good stuff. Really good perspective. And I love the late breaking news. That's always, that's always exciting. Um, Peter, we're going to come to you. Any second round steals for Eiserman and company to keep an eye out for. I've been a really big fan of his dating back to the start of the season. And it's a shame that he missed the start uh, or his first OHL season is uh, Bryce McConnell Barker from the Sioux Greyhounds. And I'm a very big fan of his i'm hoping that you know i've talked about it multiple times if the maple Leafs were to get a second round pick you know being a least redder i would hope that they would try and go after him but i love his two-way game um he also has the offensive sniper side to him as well uh the way i see it is a two-way goal scoring centerman great reads he's very you know not necessarily passive, but he's very patient and he likes to read the play very, very well. And he, uh, and he provides great support. So if they were trying to go for a late or like a second round center with great depth, I think he would be a great addition uh, with their second pick. I like Noah Warren, um, right-handed defenseman, strong, physical, great defensively. He can jump into the rush and he's great in transition with his mobility. 
uh, offensive production may not be there, but the fact that he's smart defensively is something that I think the Red Wings may look at, especially on the right-hand side. You want to try and fill that out. Uh, I could see him as, you know, in, in a bottom six pairing kind of role situation. And as for a late round pick, and I, I'm going to be writing his profile very soon. It's uh, Philip Nordberg. Um, very like he hasn't gotten quite enough attention because of all the other names coming out of Sweden. But I love his game. Uh, it, it's he's very sound positionally, very great defensively. Can jump in, and again, kind of similar to Noah Warren. He may jump in offensively from time to time, and he's not afraid to do so. But it's his defensive game that stands out the most. And I think if you, the fact that they have the offensive mindset of uh, Mort Sider, Simon, mm-hmm. uh, Simon Evanson, and also you know the defensive play that they provide as well. But if you want to fill out that depth with still solid two-way defensemen, mm-hmm. I think Norberg could be one of those other guys that f- flies under the radar and could be a great pickup for them in a fourth-round situation. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. All right. We're going to finish with a a winner take all, if you will. And I'm going to go in reverse order from who I see this time. So last question of the show, true or false. If Detroit fills its biggest needs in this year's draft, the rebuild is officially over. Devin, we're starting with you. Uh, You look at the Kings and look at the Rangers, you know, two of the biggest, two of the best prospect pools around the league. The re- rebuilds weren't considered over until this year because they both made the playoffs. My answer is no until the Red Wings take that next step. That's one false. Kyle, over to you. True or false? False because even if they fill those needs, there are not enough uh, NHL ready players in this year's draft that are going to make an immediate impact. And there still needs to be other voids to be filled through free agency. And then it will depend on who they pick as coach. So still no. Yeah, I don't mean I don't mean to interrupt the flow, but the free agency point is a big sticking point for me on this question. When you see Eiserman going out and making a yeah. true splash, mm-hmm. that's when I think for yep. what it's worth, the rebuild is on its way out. But Delaney coming over to you. True or false? If Detroit fills its biggest needs in this year's draft, the rebuild's officially over. I uh, got to go false. Uh, there's still a you can slap tape on it any way you want to, but it's still leaking until it's, well, if it's flex tape. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair point. We don't even have a coach. Out here. So I think we kind of need that before you can yeah. even speculate about yeah. the rebuild being over with this draft. Sure. There's a lot of work to be done still. A Absolutely. lot. We have one solid goalie at the moment on our active roster. Yeah. Help her. Coach. <laughs> oh, wow. Shots fired. Just kidding. Just Holy kidding. Just kidding. That was, that was, that was total joke. Total At least, joke. But please rip me in the comments. I don't care. Let's do that. We're going to do that anyway, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> all right. Peter, over the, to you. We're almost through this. We are better. almost through. Come on, guys. <laughs> Peter, true or false? You know the question. Uh, false and mainly for the same reasons that have been previously mentioned before. It's still not done until you take the next step. And I still think that despite the fact that they gave a run early on this seat, this past season, and then just fell off shows that there still needs to be a lot of work to be done. And, you know, who knows some of their prospects that they were high on can maybe come back to bite them and may not work out as planned. That always is the case. Sure. Um, it, it happens with every other team where we think one player is higher or he, he's expected to develop properly and he doesn't. So until that happens and until all their key pieces come together, they're still at least a few years away. Makes sense. Matthew, you've got the last word, which makes sense because you've got to edit this whole thing anyway. (laughs) True or false. (laughs) If Detroit fills its needs in this year's draft, the rebuild's officially over. True. No. Uh, <laughs> I dissent. <laughs> False. No, no. I, it's, no, the t- Red Wings aren't there yet. Uh, there's like you know, reiterate every what everyone's saying. You know, the the prospects aren't haven't really arrived yet. I mean, looking at Raymond, we still know if he, he's the re- real deal. He have one. He has one good year. You know, mm-hmm. we'll see if he can string a few together. Cider, same thing. He's a he looks great in first year. We'll see if he can, you know, keep it going. And uh, a lot of their prospects haven't even been proven yet. So um, you can't say rebuilds over. Like, and same thing with you've had uh, with the free agency too. We, 
until Eisenman says, okay, we're moving on. We're going to start ma- filling holes in free agency with big signings. Um, yeah, it's not over and until they make the playoffs is a big one too. Like, like yeah, Kevin said, so for sure. For sure. Makes <laughs> can sense. I, can I throw one curveball at Peter while we have him on Calder <laughs> trophy on Tuesday? Bunting or call or cider? Who you got? Oh, get out Dang. of here with that! Oh, bunting, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I, I'm being realistic. I think it should go to more cider. Um, I just want to because, get that on the record. Yeah, oh, I've, I've said it plenty of times oh, on the man. record on Project Recorder too. I've even joked yeah, saying no, Michael Bunting ahead of times, but no, it's definitely got to be more cider with the season that he had. Um, and also, if I'm looking at it from a team perspective. Michael Bunting yeah. was playing alongside Matthews and Marner, two already established elite players. Sider was playing 20 plus minutes, carrying his own line at times or his own pairing and being the best player out there. So I, it, it's more Sider for me. He would get my vote. <laughs> well, uh, I cast, I, 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 I cast yeah. my vote for Karel Vamelka. So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you Homer. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. All right. Holy cow. The madness is done. The madness is done. <laughs> Uh, Matthew, Peter, thank you so much for joining us on this on this really special episode. We appreciate it. Delaney, it was great having you on at the first of what we, I hope is many, many appearances on the Hockey Writers Grind Line. And you at home, remember, go sign up for Morning Skate at morningskate.io. Kyle and his team put so much hard work into it. And you will be sure to be in tune with the latest John Tortorella post-game meltdowns that are sure to come in Philadelphia very soon. Right, Brooksy? So make sure you go sign up for that. Don't forget, toss us a like, subscribe to the Hockey Writers YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us for yet another really fun grind. That's our show. We will see you next time. Cheers.